Number two seed. I think, again, these are teams that we kind of are predicting, forecasting, whatever the term is you want to be for assuming and predicting just because on paper, how they did last season. Number two seeds, I have the Kansas City Chiefs for the AFC, and I have the San Francisco 49ers in the NFC. Very high probability that we could see these teams rematch in the Super Bowl. Last week, though, I did say that I don't think the Kansas City Chiefs will three-peat. Get into the playoffs, yes. They are too talented of a team not to. Even last season when we thought that they weren't going to really excel very much, they played very much down to their competition, not a great receiving core, really felt like they were struggling in a lot of games that they should have won handily, and they didn't. However, this season, in my opinion, an upgraded receiving core with Xavier Worthy, um, Rashid Rice second year, Sky Moore still on the team, uh, signing Hollywood Brown. Uh, obviously, you still have Travis Kelsey. And then on the defensive side of the ball, again, my worries was the pass, the pass defense type of, uh, style of the defense. You know, is their secondary good enough to hold opponents? Pass rushing is a questionable one as well. Although, with the exception of Chris Jones, Chris Jones is is who he is, and he's going to get after it for sure. But the rest of the defense, can they play together, and can that defense really stand strong? I imagine there'll be a very bend and don't break. We'll probably do their best to keep you know, offenses off the field, but fortunately, they have an offense that can keep up with high-powered teams, but can that defense get stops when needed, I think is the big question for the Chiefs. But no doubt, a talented team under Andy Reid, uh, you know, with Patrick Mahomes, best quarterback in the NFL, no debate. No debate on number one is absolutely him. And, you know, again, until proven otherwise, this is the best team that's in the NFL. Even though I have them seated at number two, that is not indicative of how they are as a team. It just, my opinion, I think Houston Texans will have better record and will just be, you know, the number one seated team in the AFC. Drew Code Sports Talk is supported by SeatGeek. SeatGeek is your go-to app for tickets, making it super easy to find the best deals. They even rate each ticket deal on a scale of 1 to 10, so you know you're getting your money's worth. And as a special thank you to our listeners, we've got a promo code just for you. Use Drew Code at checkout to get $20 off your first order. That's $20 off your first purchase, whether it's for the game that you've been dying to see or that concert that everybody is talking about. Head over to SeatGeek now, find your perfect seat, and use Drew Code for $20 off your first order. SeatGeek. Get your tickets to the action today. Now, moving on to the NFC. I think that the San Francisco 49ers, and again, I'm I'm very much contradicting myself, and I take full responsibility for that. But what I will say is, you know, when I was doing this list, I had a really hard time figuring out when at some point in the season the injury bug will hit the 49ers. I'm still in the camp that it will. I and honestly, too, we were having a uh, podcasting draft that we were invited to, like I had mentioned at the top of the show. And, uh, you know, we were on we we were drafting on Sleeper and, you know, a couple of the other content creators uh, and sports podcasters. We were talking about Brandon Ayuk and that contract situation and the 49ers. And I had made the point and majority of that draft s- agreed and felt like it was very similar to where Brandon Ayuk. I don't want to say made a fuss. I'm I'm for players getting the money that they believe that they've earned. I believe Ayuk earned his money. I feel like though prolonging it the way it did throughout this whole offseason, how messy it got to where there was reports of Brandon Ayuk had, you know, there's um a deal in place to go to Pittsburgh or wherever the team was that essentially they had somewhat of a framework agreement before sending him off to then you know, counter reports as of, you know, he's got to be back with the team uh, and he's going to sign very soon. Ayuk himself even said that he probably made it harder than he was. And I'm concerned with Brandon Ayuk being that type of player that got his, got his bag and now is not going to produce basically what he should in order to make that contract worthy. My concern is like, I'm not saying Ayuk isn't a talented receiver, but my concern is of now like, okay, he got paid. He's now taken care of. And now will he 
will he now make leaps in terms of now being worthy of that contract? Because this majority of this offseason, there was talks and conversations on whether or not the 49ers should allow Debo Samuels to walk and just keep Ayuk because a lot of people said that he was the better of the two receivers. I think that's a little outlandish. I'm not a 49ers fan, but I can I can see where that's an interesting discussion for for some 49er fans. I don't know if I would agree with it. I I feel like Brandon Ayuk had a good season or so, but I feel like Debo Samuels is clearly the more valuable receiver, not taking away anything that Brandon Ayuk has done on the field or his talent. I just wouldn't agree with that overall assessment. But nevertheless, though, Ayuk resigns, which I think is the right decision. But a lot of our concerns, and again, I'm bringing it back to that uh, uh, podcaster's um, you know, draft that we had yes, uh, last night on, that I was mentioning. You know, Will Brandon Ayuk live up to that contract? Will he be the player that a lot of people are assuming, but now will he deliver on that? I think that's a huge question mark. I also brought up in last week's episode of why I'm concerned with the 49ers is they have an annual injury bug that just goes through that team, whether it's on the defensive side of the ball, whether it's offense, it does not help that Christian McCaffrey, you know, in here. And again, I mentioned this last week. I'm not a superstitious person when it comes to. Thank you. I'm not a superstitious person when it comes to. The Madden curse, it is kind of weary, though, how majority of Madden cover athletes go through some sort of turmoil during seasons. Now, there are some that haven't, fair to that, but it does not help. And also, too, again, it's the 49ers. Yearly, they will they have some sort of injury that prevents them from going into their full potential. And also, too how much of this window for their Super Bowl is still open, which is the argument I brought up last week. And I have now seen more on sports TV recently about how good this team is and what their potential is. You know, now you have Trent Williams who re-signed, which was great. He's probably the most valuable player on that team outside of Christian McCaffrey. Now that Trent Williams is re-signed, now you make sure you have a good offensive line. And again, injuries. Will that affect him in a good way or a bad way? Chris McCaffrey, can he stay healthy? Brock, ba- uh, Brock Purdy, can he stay healthy? I have questions. However, no doubt on paper, this roster is talented enough that now it leaves me again contradicting myself, which I fully take responsibility for, where I think that the San Francisco 49ers will be the second seed in the NFC. I do think that they also will take the NFC West crown. I'm owning it right now. I'm already saying it. However, the points I brought up can't deny them at least of the reasoning behind them. Say that. Okay. Okay.